first scripture reading will come from the book of first John chapter one and chapter two. Let me just to come, all brothers and sisters, again to this gospel preaching of Christ about Christ and Him crucified, the gathering of the saints that has been redeemed, saved by His grace alone, the gathering of the only people, the bought one. The one that preaches Christ and him crucified alone without compromise. No any other name is preached there other than Christ and him crucified alone. Our first scripture reading will come from the book of First John chapter 1 and chapter 2. Nikulandi lady no say amind abambo kunkuma no so atsikulalelo. Umene tikuma nila natumila krisi ru, amene kristu yeka na amene ale megezeka pa mkuma no Mpingo wa bale oera mtima, amene ale chitaku ombole do nyumazi wa yesu Kuchitaku guli doa, kuchitaku masuri doa Mwere nge doko mao goya pa kujoke na mbukula wani yohane chapter wani Kwa maso chapter two Kwa marisa mwere nge doko mao amene wa Abare awuga sungu muri chongolela nyumba ya mungu imoti. Tikadero tikapili zaoni yohane chapter 3 to chapter 4. Kwa mungu nisikira awuga sungu kuyambisa nyumba ya mungu. I will start ready. First John chapter 1. Wani yohane 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show and toy that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things like we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness of at all. Six. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Two, my little children, these things let I unto you, that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the luscious. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world, of the whole world. Three. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. 
He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Five. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God. Perfected hereby know we that we are in him. Six. He that said that he abideth in him ought himself also so walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which he had from the beginning. The Old Testament is the, the Old Commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which I think is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. Nine. He that saith he is in right and hateth his brother he is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not which he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning, I write unto you, young men, because he have overcome the wicked, well, wicked one, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. 17. And the world passeth away, and the last thereof, but he that doeth the, the will of God abideth forever. 18. The little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have not out have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest, might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Twenty. But you have an option from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. 23. Whosoever denied the Son, the Son hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son 
as the Father also. Let that therefore abid in you which ye have heard from the beginning, if that which he ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. He also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even at no eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. The last verse. If ye know that he is luscious, ye know that everyone that doeth lusciousness is born of him. Brother Austin from Kasungu, with the brothers there, will lead a song of praise unto the name of the Lord. Thereafter, Brother uh, Covid who continue reading chapter 3 and chapter 4 in our local dialect. And the, at the end, the brothers from Tan Sanje will lead us a, a song. Now you know Abusa Austini, Pamot Zinda Bale, Kamubat Sambare, Wina Meneko, Sogole and Nimbo Yambugo, Marisa Bo, Mare, Kobidi, Akala Puerenga, so chapter 3 and chapter 4. Aga Marisa Kobidi, Abara Wum Sanje at Sogola Stanford, Mugere, Mguru, Mugambits and Nimbo, Yambu, Mukamu, once again, I'm not wearing that now. Tell you, Abusa Austin. Nimbo number 36. Yesu Bezira Ochi, my
Mene mo sentima watu uti tusa chifuwa mulungu walio wangkulu Mubo sa mitima yatu Na sinti kila zumuse Ogo ndedwa mitima watu upapanda uti tusa Jininaku ulimu mitima mamuluku Nibo chimene chili chose di pempa Tila njila kwa hini Ifuwa tisunga maramuno wache Nibo di chita zon kongresa pumasopa ache Nibo la mula ache ndini Ukiti kubilile zina la mwana wa Jesu Kristu Niku kunda na wina jimzaje Monga ata jidamulila Ndipo mtu wamele asunga maramuru aje Akala mwanyi Ndiye mwa mtu uyo Ndipo mwenele mwo Tisindi kila kuti akala mwanyi fe Kuchoke ila Mzimu amele ata jipasa ife Chapter 4 verse 1 Kwa kwande edwa Musa makulu bila mzimu uliwonse Kuma yesa ni mizimu, nga dicho bila mamulungu, kufesa ni nilio nye nga ambili, anatulunga kukua mziko la pansi. Verse 2. Menemo, muzi ndi kila mzimu wa mulungu, mzimu uliwasi umene uva meneza kuti Yesu Kristu, anaza mtubi, ucho kera mamulungu. Nipo mzimu uliwasi umene uva meneza Yesu, sujo kera kwa mulungu. Nipo uhu ndiyo mzimu uka na Kristu. Mwumene muda mfakuti ukuza Nipo ulimo mziko la pansi Sobano lobe Inu ndinu wacho kena kwa mulungu Tiana Nipo muna ilaka Mfakuti iye wakukala mwaidu Apo sa iye wakukala mziko la pansi Iyo ndi wacho kena mziko la pansi Mwaiji Ala nkula munga wacho kena mziko la pansi Nipo mziko la pansi Nipo mfumera Ife ndifu wacho kena kwa mulungu Iye amene azindi kila mulungu ati mvela Iye kusa chokila mulungu sati mvela ife Mwumwe kutisindi kila nzimu wajona ni nzimu wajusokelezo Vesepe Kogo ndedua Tikondane wina ni mzaji Tifuwa kutichikondi chichokila kwa mulungu Nipo yese amene akonda abado kuchokila kwa mulungu Na mzindi kila mulungu Iye osa konda sa mzindi kila mulungu Chifuwa mulungu ndiye chona ni Kukwa jita onega chikondi cha mulungu maife Kuti mulungu anantu mamana waje ubadwa yeka Alowe mziko la pansi Kuti tikale ndi mwe mwa iye Kumo mwuri chikondi Sikuti ife dinakonda mulungu Kuma kuti iye anati konda ife Niko anantu mamana waje Akale chombolo tifuaja machimu watu Woko ndedwa Ngati mulungu anati konda ife Kwa tato ife so jene na kukonda Wina ndi mzaje Bajite mtu ada mwona mulungu Ntawi ini yose Chiko ndana wina ni mzache, mungu akala mwaife, njichiko ni jache, chikala cha mbido mwaife. Mbenemo, tisi ndikila kuti tikala mwaie, njie mwaife, chifuwa anatipasa kwa nzimu wache, motini. Nipo ife tapenyela. Nipo tishita umboni, kuti adate, anatuma mwana, akare mpumu usi wanziko la pansi. Iye amena zafo meleza kuti yesu wali mwana wa mungu, Mungu akala mwaiye, diye mwa mungu. Nipo ife, tazindikila, nipo na kubila, chikondito, mungu alinajopa ife. Mungu ndiye chikondi, nipo iye amene akala mchikondi, akala mwa mungu. Mene mo, nipo mungu akala mwaiye. Mene mo, chikondi jatu, chikala janguilo, kutitikala na kukulimbika mtima, mtsiku la nandu. Chifuwa monga yeyo ali mwemwe, chifuwa monga yeyo ali, mwemwe mwote di ife mziko di nola pansi. Mwulipe manta mchikondi, kumashikondi changwilo, chita ya kunja manta, kubeza manta alinajo chilango, nipu wa manta ayo, saka lwa ungilo mchikondi. Tikonda ife, chifuwa anayamba iye kutikonda. Mungu aga tikuti nikonda mungu, na aga na nae mbali wache ali waboza. Kwa kuti iye wasa konda mbale wache, amene wa muona. Sa koza kukonda mungu, amene sana muona. Wala mungu hili, tilinalo, nocho kila kwa iye. Kuti iye amene akonda mungu, akonda so mbale wache. Mbale afestu nubiyaji kusanji, nyimbo. Nyimbo namba 51. Ukama kwa 51. Ndine mbusa yu wapwipu Ndina fira mbusa 
hear the word of God, you people, Christ is the shepherd. He is the way. He is the door, free from the wolves. But Christ keeps his own people. What a beautiful child. Let us look to God in prayer. As Brother Ken is uh, in waiting to start preaching, Brother Chirion, look to God in prayer as Brother Ken is in waiting. you to look with me in 1st Peter chapter 2 as we continue our study here. My text today is from verse 11 down to verse 20 and I want to speak with you about what it is to be a stranger and pilgrim in this world. After having taken some 10 verses to describe who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, he speaks there in verse 2 of being as newborn babes. He also speaks in verse 5 of being living stones that are founded upon the foundation of Christ. In verse 7, we are described as being of those of whom Christ is precious. Actually, in verse 6, being elect and precious in Christ, he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So many good things. In verse 9, a chosen generation. And all of a sudden now, in verse 11, he says, but let me remind you that as we live out our lives on this earth, we are going to be as strangers and pilgrims. The six years of the year, the first year 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 of the so what is our life as the elect of God to be like as we live out our days upon this earth as God has ordained? Well, he says there in verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Verse 11, I am a 
Ugo ndedwa. Ndi kuda ndaulilani, ngati alendo, ndi ugonera. Zikanize, zwa zilakula kwa za chubi, zimene zikila nkondo kwa moyo. So he says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, among the nations, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. <laughs> Jimene agamba zainu nga diho chita zoiva. Agare meleze murungu kakuona nchito zanu zabu ino msikula kwe anganila. Then he says in verse 13, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and for the praise of them that do well. So this answers those that might think, well, I'm saved, I've been redeemed at the cross, I'm justified, it doesn't matter how I live, and I don't have to obey anybody. I'm the Lord's. But what Peter is saying, and this by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, is that it's just the opposite. The fact that we are the Lord's, the fact that we live in this world where he has placed us, it does matter how we live. In fact, verse 15, he states it very strongly, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. He says in verse 16, as free, yes, we are free men. We've been delivered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as free men, we live not in subjection to men's rules and regulations, but as unto Christ. And yet, he says in verse 16, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. <laughs> And so he says in verse 17, As servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king.
And servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. And notice, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, and here it is, this is acceptable with God. We have to remember that these to whom Peter was writing were being persecuted by the very government that ruled back in the day, the Roman government. Not on the Roman government, but the Jewish leadership of the day stood against them as well. Remember that in the very first verse of chapter 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, noticed to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. They were scattered because of the persecution. They were dispersed outside of their homeland. They were refugees. And yet he reminds them in verse 2 of chapter 1, nonetheless elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. They were scattered throughout the world, and yet they were still the Lord's. And he had them in his eye, and Christ had them in his hand. And that's how Peter uses this in verse 11. Yes, he said, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, but look what he says before that, dearly beloved. Dearly beloved of God and dearly beloved of Peter himself. Verse 
But that expression, strangers and pilgrims, not only applied to these of the first century, but is the situation of every son of God, every child of God. Yes, chosen by God the Father from eternity, purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross, and called by the Spirit of God and His grace. And yet, so long as we live in this world, we're not home. We are strangers and pilgrims. The Lord has called us out from this world. It's like the scriptures speak of Abraham that the Lord called out of Babylon to take him into the promised land, and yet he lived in tents all his life. And the scriptures say that he sought a country that the builder and the city was none other than God himself. His hope was in glory, not on this earth. Look how it's put there in Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 8 through 10. It says, by faith, that's the revelation of Christ, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went, and by faith, again, that same revelation of Christ, he sojourned in the land of promise, but notice, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, that is, in tents, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. And here it is, verse 10, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. <laughs> Does this not describe the life of everyone that the Lord has called out unto himself? We're in, where we live right now is according to his purpose and will. And yet we live as in a strange country. In other words, we don't put any confidence in anything that we have or where we dwell now, knowing that this is all temporary and that the eyes of faith that the Lord has given cause us to look outside ourselves to that city, speaking of heaven, speaking of glory, whose builder and maker is God. The foundation is in none other than God through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's our hope. 
Chebenzo Jatu, Chiriba Yeso Christo, Amene Ndofumo Menori Mkuta, Chibere Chukwa Negra Yaba Abla Amu, Sada Ige Chebenzo Jake, Babu Tendere, Kudzimfu Nila Mtendere Eka, Kuduzi Muyendele Kula Karebabu Ino Ae, Adalala Kukona Mtendi, Mcho Nila Riyeyo, Ale Mege Segendi Murungu, Kuma Masuwa Ke Abu Yangana Mtsogolo, Nibwa Kwa Umundi Mene Swe Infedene Kila Kukarila, Sidi mene kila kutifunila ule mungu, tile meleza roka, kutisaba nita roka. Kwa wakopo sati angane mkadimu hatu ulumu ni jembekezo chatu, nchua tani. Nipo jembekezo chatu, nefinile chiangareba enso kristu ye kawaba chiki doi zika telo, tima kala mfuru. It's not the things of this earth that the Lord gives us to enjoy that are the foundation of our joy and happiness. We're settled in what he's given us. We have a house, we have a family, we have food on our table, and for the most part, live pretty peaceable lives in this world. And yet we're never really settled because we know this is not our permanent home. <laughs> Chikale pa krisi tu osa riba zintu ai. Chifuwa ntuwa bini maso hao ama ngo kala kuri mwina kare ni nyumba ya kuino. Ai ya si kala ndala ama si suwa yendela. Akale ni banja la kuino. Ai ntuwa mene onde kuri chembeke zo jaba uchanga wa kuino palibe. Chisindi kilo jaba uchanga wa kuino kwa antu. Sikuma ngana ru kare ndala ama zonjulu uka haka vena kare ni nyumba ya kuino kwa vena banja ai. Kwa mani kuyanga na pa yeso krisi kwa vena kuri chembeke zo jai wa osa nkidwa. And that's why he says to them in verse 11, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. There's going to be that struggle within us because we know we have to live and we need means to live. But at the same time, we're not to set our heart and affection on anything in this world, but our affection is on Christ who's seated above. Nifuajache, but nimaga eleven yo, imanena kudi muzika, muzika zike, muzika nize, zilako lako za tubi, zimene zikida nkondo, mmoyo uno. Kuna tau za kudi mchubirino, mulizola kalaka, sofuna, zimene fedima zifuna zida kazi kikapa kwe watu. Ndipo, ndi zimene zozo, zimene tima na kalaka, ndi kufuna zo, Zima tipangita ifeyo kusakala ndi mtendere. Maromu hake, tima yangana zimene zogulizi zimu la beba mwe watu. Nibondi zimene zima tipangita ifeyo kukarabu ito. Kwa matu chimena kuno la mkula ya panchona ude. Masoa anu sama funika kareba zimene zozo. Kulibu ino zimene zilo kusita jote sedwa. Kwa menu masoa anu akareba kristu yesu ye kabas. Now here's a reminder that our perfection is in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. In ourselves. As long as we're in this flesh, there are going to be those fleshly lusts that war against our soul. This sh shows that we're still sinners by nature. So long as we live in this flesh, we're going to be subject to the desires of the flesh and this body, which only tend toward sin. That's all we are in ourselves. And so what Peter is writing here is that our eyes be on Christ and not following after these fleshly lusts, which only war against. That shows that the very enemy is within us. It's not just out there in the world. It's within us. We carry the enemy around with us. Which is our sin nature. You know, Udaniwa to how is on sale, Sada no Sebu, Tima said, I would definitely as we know, Banjala to the Kaleba we know, Tizikal and the Makobi, Tizikal and the Zinfo. Zvez is Vesima to the Telef of Pebuga, the Gosat Zuau Chango, in the Fajuku Villa, who got a chip of your Kabo Korava, Karaguma, and Dragana Gaki, and Roma Kantan Rama, Gana Gaki, Umakora, and Yumaya we know. Now, 
Yima bendo kare nyengo Sezili mwino mwonga mwagufuna kwa tube kwa aye Now There's nothing that can destroy the soul if we're the Lord's. If he has paid our sin debt, we're justified. There's therefore now no condemnation. But we have to realize that until the Lord takes us from this world, in this flesh, there's going to be that warfare against Christ and against the Spirit and against all that... We are, by God's grace, this flesh is a very real enemy. Just as Peter said, abstain from fleshly lusts. That's how he began the chapter in verse 1, chapter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. That's all what this flesh would have us do. In say and how it would have us live, but we're Christ, and therefore we abstain from those fleshly lusts. We treat everything within us as being nothing but an enemy to Christ. <laughs> When people hear that word fleshly lusts, in many cases, they think in terms of lust of this body as pertaining perhaps to sexual desires or fleshly lusts as pertains to wanting more of the wealth of this world. That's how people often think of fleshly lusts. <laughs> But lusts come from within. So here we're to consider those things within us, such as what? Pride, or anger, or jealousy, or covetousness toward others, envy gossip, murmuring, all of these things that are within us that war against the soul. Those are the fleshly lusts that Peter wrote up there in verse 1, where he speaks of malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speaking. That's as grievous before the Lord as is murder. These are enemies within that would rob us of the joy of being the Lord's, and they lust against all that 
the Lord has made us to be by his grace. Only our physical death will deliver us from these lusts of the flesh that war against the soul. So long as we are alive, there's going to be a warfare within. That's why we're called strangers and pilgrims. It's because the Lord Himself has purposed that we never settle in this world, because as His elect and redeemed and justified by Christ, we are called to an eternal glory. Anything in this life is temporal, but that eternal because of Christ's work. So that's why he says there in verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. In other words, that we don't live like the world. The Lord has given us a grace unlike he's given to the world. And so we live in this world as separated out unto Christ. When he says there in verse 12, having your conversation, that word means your conduct, how you conduct yourself, let it be honest among the Gentiles, among your neighbors, among your family. Don't try to pretend that you're something that you're not. It's the Lord himself that has put a difference between his children in this world and the rest of the world. It's the grace of God. That's it. We're not to change our thinking or our ways so as to please the world. We live in this world as God has made us by His grace to the glory of Christ. When it says there, having your conversation honest, to be honest means you're not changing how you live or speak depending on with whether you're with the world or whether you're with your your brethren in Christ. There's not this changing like a chameleon, being one thing with the world and another thing with those that are the Lord's. <laughs> Uh, 
auti au tunataka za kuti siri mene kila kukala wa sita sinta kurigwa ntuwa pembera nao azitu wana monga wa pembera kwa wantoza pembera azitu wana ebeo monga jikadejo chita hiko joni asa nijo hiba ae mbali zonse pazika la kuone kila umu ino ndu unguilo wapukaribe watu mene lima kala nao now here again being strangers and pilgrims in this world we have the fleshly lusts within but we also have the adversity of the world without because they don't understand why we don't run with them they don't understand how it is that we worship god in this one way through his son crucified they're opposed in every way <laughs> Mbali pakuti mundo ama karandi zira kula hapo mkari mamoyo wake. Kwa mbadaine kila pasika la shoti nika nita, maendele atu, mamangudele atu, machidibe nijita jilichonse. Kuti chizifu nuko zira ili nga kare mtundu wa utenga, mbele nyo muma la likila ndiku kumbilila. Nipo mbakusindi kila ichi, azadzi wa kuti nyo muli ndu utenga wina, wosia na kwa teladu, ndu utengo mene wa ama utiwa. There's the reality that if the Lord has, by his grace, delivered us unto his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a separation. The Lord separates us out from this world. This work of Christ in us separates us out from even the religious world, not just secular, but religious world, whereas we cannot go and worship with these that don't know Christ and him crucified, never been taught of him. Their hope is in their works and in their will and in their way, but we can't worship with them. And so for that, they speak evil against you. <laughs> But that's why he says there in verse 12 that whereas they speak evil against you, they may by, it says here, your good works. That word good means God. It comes from the word God in English. So that they may by, and you'll see your in our Bible is in italic. It means it's not in the original. So that they may by God's working in you is the way to see that. They shall behold and glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, in the day that he may be pleased to visit them. We don't have any good works in ourselves. The only good work in Scripture is God's work, what He has done on behalf of sinners such as we are. And so it's saying that that is our life and that as we live out our life in this world, even though they speak evil against us, even though the world is at enmity with God, yet seeing how he's been pleased to be merciful to sinners such as we are and gracious, that their eyes being open may in the day that God would visit them, glorify God, give God the glory. Ifair, 
aka karafa inu ro vumburutsa krisi tu moya negramu ya setse kukala ndi mkaride wabu ino wosa gulugusha ako mawa ule mu kuti monsemo antu pa kuona zimenezo na imene munu kwa funawa ya nganile aka lalikile mo krisi tu wapa chikidwa mkari mwamo ya wawo chifajwa kuona nchipa za nusa ku ino and so it goes on or peter goes on to show in every area of life that we're to be living as unto the lord in this world and not as unto the world before the lord now verse 13 and 14 may surprise some because it says submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. So you read that and you think, well, what is it? Are we submitted to the Lord or are we submitted to man? He's certainly not speaking here in terms of worship, that we're to be subjected to men's traditions and teaching by way of worship. That's not the context here. In verse 14, he explains it as unto governors. In other words, the Lord has put in place governments for our benefit to protect us as we live in this world. And so we're not to say to officials that are elected or to governors and others, I don't have to submit to the laws of the land because I'm a Christian and I'm the Lord's. That's not how we reason. Yanko, la meredi gonjeremo, di goni gira bandimaka 14, imena kuti, kapena kwa kazembe. Unantawa za nini mungu muini, amene ada ika maboma, kutipa karema uchokoleli, uchokolela, nduna chani zonse, boma lina lirose, ada ika bondi mungu. Nde ifeyo, tibe negira kukonjera, kuboma lina lirose. Simu ino, kumala ukula ura, ine dineo kurubi lila, ine dineo sankidwa, yes we are strangers and pilgrims in this world and yet we are to be subject to those that the lord has put over us as we live in our community or in our state or our nation as as good citizens in other words, if there's taxes to pay, we pay them. When uh, oh. the police officer pulls your vehicle over the bus and asks to see your paperwork, you're not saying to them, I don't have to show you my paperwork. I'm a Christian. That's not how we live. <laughs> I'll go as far as to say that when there are elections in our various countries, that the child of God is not to get caught up in the politics of this world. We are to live as quiet citizens before the Lord. Yes, when it comes time to vote, we vote, 
but we're not to be out front with the world denouncing this one or that one because you never know but the that that one you denounce is the one that God has purposed that should be the governor so you're going against the will of God my god when you turn so kuno kwadeka masankho kuratwa zivota iweyo subenekira kumanera ina dinawo sankhilo siye nekira kuvota ayi bila kuvote njiwa kwe nungo vota ukamalisa apopo usatsogolele athu kumala kula eh president wino ndi uyu ayi uyu moyipa uyadobera uyadobera ayi zivele zosi zako ndipo siwele ifini kulemba ngati mere kuba ika patsogolo baka pa ngati mere sizima kukhudza iweyo uwasila mera nda waika kuna zikamba zimene zozo chifukwa kuti wabwati kuti president amene omika kawerepo omika ndi mulungu I don't recall anywhere in Christ's ministry and life where he ever himself or with his apostles instructed them that they should go out and campaign against Caesar campaign against Nero, even though it was one of the worst regimes that ever has existed that was tyrannic. And yet the Lord said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. In Bible, I'm going to report to the Lord, and I'm going to say, Jesus Christ, I'm going to say, 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 That's why Paul wrote in Romans 13 and verse 1, and two, he said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, that's earthly governments, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, whosoever therefore resisteth the power. You go out and campaign against this one that's in authority right now, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. When people of this world want us to get caught up in politics, and it's everywhere, it's in every country, and they ask you, well, what do you think about this person here that's in power? It could be a president, it could be a, a mayor, it could be anybody that's in power. I don't care what they ask you about that person. The answer is the Lord put them there. That's yes. the answer. They're there because God put them there. And they'll be shocked. Ah, yeah, but look how he is and all. It doesn't matter. God put them there for his purpose and his honor alone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Chifuwa ni mungu, amene ama ikamu ntubapato, mtawewa ikika, 
kaya tuwaka mtu wa chamojiti jimkutoka ni ukalabwa hui na hili ya migani abuwe wa igae kapa mpano basi no yanko la ukulubi ni ilani belero well i'd like to come back to this next time because there's a lot more here we live as pilgrims as strangers and pilgrims in this world where we live as free like it says in verse 16 but as unto the lord such is the way the lord has purposed our lives May the Lord give us wisdom and direction to live to his honor and glory in all things. I'll turn it back to you. It was like he was a prophet. <laughs> I pray so. These <laughs> prophets, you call prophets, yeah. almost everywhere. So it was like now I was hearing that brother Ken now is prophesying. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Declaring the word of the Lord. For sure, the Lord should teach us, brother Ken. Hmm. We are very rich, very blind. Hmm. And the, because of the blindness that is with the sinners such as I am and the, my fellow brothers here, they think that, and we do think that, we are in the front to oppose. And whatever you were speaking, you were preaching for sure, it was like God just take you to Malawi and speak what is this Malawi. As Malawi is protesting against the president as of now, from the elections that we had, oh. many people are in the, in the Lord demonstrating, putting on the collar, putting on the collar as a pastor mm. with, with their briefcase. Yeah. Pastors are campaigning in their churches that let us go to the demonstrations against the president. So. Wow. Whatever you was speaking, Brother Ken, tears mm. yeah. was it... just coming on my cheeks mm. to hear how blindness the leaders are in the in these congregations. Yes. But claiming themselves that they are preachers of the word. Right. Well, that's May where the Peter Lord said, us. the Lord give us grace to abstain from the lust of the flesh, to use okay. anything of the flesh to try to do the Lord's work. It's through the faithful, clear, distinct preaching of Christ and him crucified. And mm -hmm. may never a, a political word ever cross our lips when it comes to mm -hmm. who we are and, and why we're here. Yeah. To God be all the glory and honor. Amen. Our last song will come from song number 93 as well as 91. 93 says about Jesus Christ descending from heaven because of my sins. Born in the village of Bethlehem, born in the Virgin Mary, even the people there rejected you, but it is because of me. And all the inhabitants of heaven praises the Lord. And Christ born as a child in his world. Even the people despised him. But he came because of me. Him is the word, and the word is life. He came to save his own people. And his only people rejected him and never identify him or recognize him. Instead, they torment him, they persecuted him, they killed him, and they crucified him, but because of me. So, when you came into this world, you came for me, the angels were singing praises just to be close. It's my soul that you came for. 
so that I should be saved. What a glorious Savior am I having the Christ and the crucified one. Nimbo number 93. Oh, 
Gracious Father, I thank you for bringing us together once again and blessing our time of worship it has been our desire to glorify and honor your son, the Lord Jesus Christ alone, whether it's through the scripture reading or singing or preaching exaltation of Christ. We know that he did come to this earth and humbled himself, became obedient unto death even the death of the cross, and yet that was just for a time to accomplish your will and purpose and salvation. And now he's exalted on high and seated in the heaven, and those for whom he's paid the debt are seated with him in his person. And we look forward to that day of being with him. This world is not our home. We're strangers and pilgrims. And yet we live to your honor and glory as you direct us, uh, I pray that what we've heard today would help us in our life as we live it out and in our conduct that when people ask us of the reason, the hope that is within us, that it be an opportunity to point them as needy sinners to your son, the Lord Jesus Christ as well. So we bow to your will in all things, thankful for the great redeeming work of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and knowing that without him, we are nothing. So we give you the praise, honor, and glory in his precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.